Hi, I'm John Diarmo with the Cokie Valley Sword Group, and today we're going to be starting a new series of uh, filler videos. These are videos um, with COVID-19 going around, people are housebound, and we just thought we'd uh, get some extra content out to you guys, um, maybe alleviate some of that boredom, right? Um, what we'll be doing in today's video is looking at Tonto and Tonto concepts. Now, if you've been following along the videos, you know that uh, Hyoho doesn't have Tonto work per se. Uh, we don't have uh, any sort of uh, Tonto Seho, right? <laughs> no, no Tonto Kata. Um, but, of course, all of the work that we do can be used with a Tonto. Um, but, just like in uh, with any tool, there are ways that you can use it that will make your life easy and ways that you can mistakenly use it that'll make your life very difficult. So uh, we're just going to go over some of those concepts. The, the Tonto that we'll be using in this uh, video will be the uh, Aluminum Tree River Knife and Tool. Uh, these are expensive. I think they run like 75 bucks, but they're quite nice. Um, they're really, really nice. Oversized handle um, as compared to historical Tonto but uh, still real nice. The other that we will be using is this Kershaw pocket knife, whose edge has been safed um, for training purposes. And that way you can see that the work that we're doing is not uh, necessarily specific to, you know, big nine inch, 11 inch blades. So. What we're going to start off with is uh, Tenochi, right? How to hold the Tonto. And what we're going to use to explore this with, and really what we're going to use to explore the whole Tonto concept, is a uh, dexterity drill taught by Yanagiryu. Um, we, I've made some uh, slight modifications to it. Uh, to incorporate work from other methods, but um, it's a good exercise. It builds familiarity with how to hold the tool and how it can be sort of utilized. So we're going to begin with the basic position. So with the edge of the tanto facing the same direction as your fingers, place the kashira, this bottom part, in the well of your palm, sort of as so, right? Close your pinky beside it. Your ring and middle finger grip firmly and your front hand finger curls around it. If you were to lay your palm flat, the knife would also be flat. Your thumb rests along the side. Your index knuckle is in line with the spine, as so. Now, uh, what we want to try and avoid here is gripping the tanto uh, as we would a sword, especially if it has a more traditional sort of short tanto handle. If it's a sort of a modern piece like this where it's very wide, then you absolutely can grip it like a sword because you've got enough space on there. But uh, gripping it like a sword in this kind of position doesn't offer you the same kind of leverage support uh, that it does when you get sort of more meat on it. So that's why we, let's see how we can do this. Rotate, 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 and get that index knuckle over. That way, when we're applying force, it travels into the bones and into the wrist when we're applying cuts. That being said, the predominant attack that we make with the Tonto, um, or that anybody makes with the Tonto, is the thrust. And that's why it is important to center that in your palm, so that as you press, the force travels down the blade into the triangle bone of the palm and into the bones of the arm. What we want to avoid is making it to where we grip it more like a, a like a hammer 
with that pinky just underneath, right? Because if we have that there, you can see it puts a great deal of strain on that pinky joint. And if you're rocking with some guy, you hit a plate uh, uh, on their dough or whatever, you're gonna end up snapping your pinky backwards and just eating that whole knife in your hand. You don't wanna do it, right? So brace it in your palm. Um, if you're unsure as to whether or not you're holding it right for the purposes of thrusting, simply place it on the ground and put your body weight into it, right? You're feeling squirrely, you can do this with sort of two tanto, do little mini push-ups, right? <laughs> it takes a lot of wrist dexterity, so don't hurt yourself. So, in this position, we can thrust and we can cut as normal. And that's how the drill begins, with a thrust to the throat, right? Boop. We want to come at an upward angle oh, from our hip. Now, from here, we move on to a cut. The drill assumes that your opponent has slipped to your outside, as so, sort of to control this side uh, whether they're going to apply a double lock, wrist lock, or whatever. Right. What we're going to do is circle our wrist, relaxing the elbow, bring it around, and pop the neck from the other side. Pop up is how this looks. Pop up. Pop up. Now, uh, when you're doing this as a dexterity drill, you're doing just that, right? It is just to build dexterity. If you were to want to apply this kind of work, obviously you'd be using a lot more tight sabaki, right? And you'd be treating this cut bump in the same kind of feeling as though you were trying to, to take the person to the ground, um, whether like a, a clothesline style attack or anything like that. But, right. but for here, yep. under and catch. Right. Now we're going to transition to the second hand position, Gakuteuchi. Right. Uh, Gakuteuchi, the uh, reverse hand for striking. The transition is very simple. We're going to use the momentum of this cut to pivot the knife into this new position. So we're going to talk about the position first, then we'll spend time on the pivot. In this gakute position, um, it's very simple, right? I've got a nice 90 degrees. I've got my thumb on the back, just like with the forward position, I want that line of support to go in to something solid. And my thumb in this position is quite solid. I can really put a lot of force here without um, basically any danger to my thumb joint. Um, so, of course, we want to avoid gripping as so, because as the pressure applies, we hit something hard, we just eat the knife. It's no good. So, how do we do the transition? Thrust, cut. I hold the knife with just my index and thumb using my ring finger to help it along. I push it through the space between my thumb and forefinger. Bop, bop. Hi. In this position, edge is facing towards me, so I'm going to wrap my hand. Ba, ba. Edge is facing towards me. I wrap my hand, and now the knife has made a full circle, and I'm into. Gakuchi, or Gakuchi no Kamai, or 
whatever you want to refer to it as. So, thrust, they slip, you cut, they slip, you switch to get to G, and you cut. Cutting here is done by extension of the elbow. You should have the feeling as though you're throwing a hook punch, right? Bam! Ba, 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 right? To catch them. Uh, if you try and sort of articulate this to cut them, you're just wasting effort and you're breaking your structure, right? See how the wrist starts to move off that strong line, Boom. right? If you find um, that you're doing partnered work and you're getting a lot of collapse with this, I suggest you start doing uh, push-ups on your knuckles uh, with your fists about in your armpit, right? As you do them, you don't want your wrist uh, to shift in comparison to your elbow. This line should stay straight and you should pump directly. That'll give you the requisite tendon strength bah, bah, to be able to make these cuts without collapsing. So we cut, or sorry, we poke, they slip. We cut, they slip. We switch to Gakutuchi. We cut, they slip, we thrust, right? Thrusting in Gakute is done by pointing the elbow at what you want to hit and extending the arm. Ba, boo, ba. Just point it, ba, and put it in. Right? Pretty simple, pretty easy. Cut, slip, bump, bump. Right? Boop, and pull it back. Now, we're going to reverse out of this position back to the first position. Right? Uh, the way we do that is just a reverse. So I curl the arm. And again, rotating on the thumb and middle finger. I bring the knife around. Again, passing through that space between the thumb and the fingers. Right? Ba, ba. Right? And I back in that position. Ba, 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 ba. Right? As I do this, I'm bringing my elbow back. To bring the knife close into my body. Right? The good working position. Right? If you're working with your knife way the heck out here, just expect this to be all taken, right? Because you're just like offering something out of your range and out of your ability to protect without doing a lot of sort of fanciness, right? They're going to eat it. Close in. Make them come to you. You've got a short little tool. They probably have a long tool, right? Make them get as close to you as possible before you start to work in. So. Thrust, cut, reverse, reverse thrust, back to the starting position. Now we're going to move into the third position. The third position, um, when I first saw Donanger's uh, video series from Dragon Library, I think it was, and watched this, I was like, okay, okay, nah, not, this, this doesn't work. Then we did some practice and some play and some testing and found out that it was actually really surprisingly secure. So, the position, boop, is this. Give him the finger, right? All I'm doing is moving the index and middle finger over the tska. Now, the relative position to the hand is as such. The knife is directly in line with the bones, whereas the knuckles and hands point off 
at a 45 degrees. So you see that line there? What we want to avoid is setting this up like a punch, right? When you punch, you want that in line because that's the angle that the force is coming from and so it's the angle you must support. In here, if I start to push here, the likelihood that this is all going to start to buckle in this direction is quite high. So, center the tom toe over. Now you notice my knuckles, uh, sort of the uh, first knuckle from the knuckles of the hand, is uh, they're sort of in line, very near it. Uh, you don't have to like sort of contort and make it dead on. Again, the easiest way to get the sense for this is to really apply a lot of weight to it. Test your Tenouchi, right? And this goes for uh, long swords, short swords, Yari, and Naginata, it doesn't matter, right? Test your Tenouchi. Find something that you can really put your body weight into. It should be able to hold it um, easily, right? If you have a lot of strain, uh, you should consider that when you're swinging at speed, right, you're going to have a lot more strain. So, nice, solid, right? So, uh, what would be the purpose of a position like this, right? We understand sort of forward fencing position and Gakteuchi, right? Oh, ninja stuff, yes, draw, very, it's, it's hidden, I can't see it, right? We understand that. With this position, basically, uh, we're converting the Tanto into kind of a pseudo yuroi doshi, a, a, an armor piercing knife, right? Does that mean that we're going to be like, oh, I've got this magic position, I'm just gonna punch right through the center of his, uh, his do, right? Or the side of his kubuto. Um, no, <laughs> obviously not. But when you're working through uh, the kusari, the, the, the chain armor that uh, connects the sode all together, uh, then, right, this is just kind of the ticket. Uh, so, it's pretty useful. So, we go back, thrust, cut, reverse, cut, reverse, thrust, back, and we can get here kind of two ways, right? We can just slip, or if we want to be fancy, we can hold firmly with the index and thumb and put the other finger over. Just the middle one at first. We let it roll, we grip with the ring and middle finger, and now we're in the middle. Right? Very fancy. This is dexterity only. Right? Uh, don't don't do this in a fight unless you're just like, you know, 15 feet away from the guy, you're like, oh I'm gonna get you right. Look at my ninja moves. I'm so fast. Oh yes, wow, very scary. Right? Just boom, bah, fast and direct, right? So we come, we thrust back. How do we get out of this? We do the reverse of the sensible method, right? Fingers just go over. Now, uh, what I like to do normally in in Yanagi Ryu, this. Uh, oh, I messed it up. <laughs> it just repeats on and on, right? What I like to do instead is after I return from this, I move to Gakuteuchi one more time. Boop. And then I add a hand tradition uh, that we do in system. I lay the back of my hand on top of the knife, turning the edge 
slightly away from my hand. I roll, and now it's in my other hand, right? So, here, so you can see that, right? Back on my hand, I turn the edge away, I roll, I grip, roll and grip, roll and grip, roll and grip, roll and grip. In, um, in the Cossack tradition, we don't do uh, knife hand positions, changes rather, out here in the air. Uh, we do them against our body. Oh, I just did it. <laughs> we do them, old habits, right? Against our body. Uh, the, well, the idea that's transmitted is that this uh, gives you a firmer hold on the tool. You have another point of support so you're less likely to just like and fumble it. Whether this is true or not, yeah, maybe. Does it matter? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. For our purposes, um, it's a nice add-on that brings us, boom, the knife in the other hand. What do we do when it's in the other hand? Some gakte. What we need it in the other one. So I rotate, under, over, back, wall. Oh, right? And now, um, I can trade back and forth. And you can start to uh, play with these ideas, right? So, stab, oh, stab back to Gekte. Make sense? It's pretty simple. Pretty easy. With your knife, same thing, right? My Kamai, my Tenouji is the same, right? Same place, same location, same reasons, right? Press, press, cut. It's <sighs> so tiny. <laughs> Somebody doesn't practice with their left hand enough. So, on and on and on, right? Very simple, very easy. So, uh, I think that is uh, probably enough, right? Do the drill. I, if you're interested in tanto work, of course. If not, then, uh, you know, like the video and piss off. No. <laughs> um, everything you need to know is in the kata and in this exercise, right? Now, of course, there are uh, more sophisticated concepts. Uh, in other methods, in other systems, and uh, I certainly employ these, right? Uh, you gotta take what works, right? Don't feel um, like your your work is sacrosanct, right? It's, um, it's a hobby, right? Could be a lifestyle, of course, um, but it's it's not like some holy relic that you must not touch and it's only in this box and nothing else, right? You've got to find what works. Uh, what works against other people who want to not, who want to make it not work. <laughs> and uh, you got to play, right? Play is so important because when you start playing with your partner, your partner will um, become more comfortable with you. And they'll start to play back. And when your partner is playful, they're not afraid of, like, uh, really messing up your stuff, right? Because it's funny, right? So, oh, yes, I have so 
yeah, oh gosh, right? It's funny, right? And uh, it's good, right? You don't want to be one of these guys that, oh yeah, I'm a fifth dawn black belt, I could be anybody, and then just gets walloped, right? You want to know that what you're doing works, um, if that's why you're doing it, right? If that's not why you're doing it, then uh, enjoy your uh, historical reenactment, right? Because that's legitimate. That is okay, right? I think we will leave it off there. As always, if you, under if you want to understand this works, you have to wedge out, pick up your tonto, and go train.